from the Ministry of the Presidency in Georgetown, this is This Week with the President with Janelle Carter. Welcome to another edition of This Week with the President, a weekly news magazine which provides an in-depth look at the policies, programs and work of the President of Guyana in his quest to realize the good life. I'm your host, Vinya Tameshwar, standing in for Janelle Carter. In the news this week, Guyana lobbies international community for support against Venezuela's aggression. Development of Linden high on the President's agenda and First Lady Sandra Granger's portfolio is an asset to the work of the President. While Guyana continues to call for peace to prevail as it seeks a permanent resolution to Venezuela's claim on its sovereign territory, the Bolivarian state is revving up its tactics of aggression. Meanwhile, Guyana is ramping up its international lobbying efforts with President Granger set to speak at the United Nations General Assembly on Tuesday, September 29. Venezuela has been making extraordinary military deployments in eastern Venezuela, that is western Guyana, which um, seem to be impacting on uh, Guyana's uh, territorial defense. It's very provocative and we feel that uh, Venezuela is treading a very dangerous course at this point in time. Rather than seeking a peaceful resolution of the matter, Venezuela seems to be uh, pursuing uh, a very offensive and aggressive course. So this certainly will be central to Guyana's um, presentation in the, National, in the United Nations General Assembly and to the bilateral relations that we're having with heads of states from all around the world. Even as the president participates in a series of bilateral meetings and places this issue on the top of his agenda for the UN summit, he agreed to meet with President of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, in a UN-facilitated meeting on Sunday evening. Over the last weekend, the Venezuelan army has deployed over 200 heavily armed troops on Guyana's frontier, which its defense minister, Vladimir Lopez, claims is merely an exercise. However, this exercise, which includes the deployment of military boats with machine guns in the Cayuni River, constitutes a flagrant violation of Guyana's sovereignty. The Cayuni River is inclusive of Guyana's border. To deploy Arm boats in the Cayuni River is an affront to our sovereignty. The GDF remains ready to define aggression on our border with Venezuela. We have troops deployed at various locations, and the important ones in this sense are location Itrimbang, location Kaikan, and we have several observation posts along the Cayuni River. Guyana holds firmly to the view that this issue, which is severely hampering its economic development, was resolved 116 years ago, a fact that Venezuela has refused to acknowledge. The administration continues to press for a juridical solution to this issue. Creation of jobs, completion of the Linden Lethem Road, and improved access to education from the nursery to the tertiary level are just some of the plans that are on the cards for Linden. These areas are critical to the development of the mining tongue since progress in this region has essentially been stymied for years and very little income generating activities are being done presently. President Granger's visit to Linden on September 18 came not a moment too soon as residents were eager to make their concerns known. This visit is just the beginning of the healing process for the region as the administration begins to work with the regional administration to create a development plan that will transform the socio-economic landscape of Linden, including a robust program to address infrastructure. The president was warmly received by Lindeners who came out in their numbers taking pictures, shaking his hand, and ensuring that their little ones get a good look of the man with whose name they're very familiar. Thank you. 
The president arrived at the Mackenzie Market where he was met by Regional Chairman Rennes Morian and other officials from the region before proceeding to walk along the market tarmac to meet with a large crowd that had converged at that square. Lyndon, Lyndon came out solidly in favor of the coalition on the 11th of May. Uh, Lyndon has some problems and I have come back here to speak to the people of Lyndon. I will return in October, because particularly the issue of um, employment for young people. And I will sit down with the regional chairman, I will sit down with the RDC and uh, see how best we can uh, solve the problems of young people. There are other things, not only, um, not only jobs, sporting facilities, um, the environment, um, but employment is the big issue here. Employment is the big issue. And uh, over the next five years we want to deal decisively with the uh, employment problem. People, uh, people uh, coming out of school must be able to look forward to employment. There is another problem of education that they are children with special needs and right now the education system does not seem to be catering satisfactorily for those children with special needs. So I link the two problems, um, education and employment. But uh, this is just a walkabout today. We'll be back in October to sit down with the people and work out together with them and the corporate community up here how we're going to deal with these two issues. Every child must be in school and every child leaving school must be able to look forward to a job. Those are the two big problems. This year, Lyndon has received a budgetary allocation of $155 million, which is geared towards the economic rebirth of the region. On Tuesday, the two PPPC's nominated commissioner for the Ghana Elections Commission were sworn in by President David Granger. The oath of office was administered to former Minister of Public Works, Robson Ben, and attorney at law, Ms. Bibi Shadik, at the Ministry of the Presidency. The Ghana Election Commission is now back up to strength and is capable of discharging its responsibilities. I am quite sure that you are impressed with the words of the oath and I am confident that uh, the commissioners would uh, discharge their duties without fear or favor, affection or ill will. Elections in Guyana, I think, are now on a stable footing, and I'd certainly like to congratulate the chairman, the chief elections officer, and the members of the commission uh, over the last two elections, uh, an air of uh, stability has returned uh, to Guyana. The president said that while everyone is impressed with the fact that Jamaica and Trinidad were able to announce elections result in a matter of hours after the close of poll, he is sure that Guyana will eventually be able to surmount its challenges in this regard. With GCOM now back up to strength, preparations can move ahead for the highly anticipated local government elections. As outlined in its 100-day plan, the administration plans to have the elections before the end of the year. Local government elections were last held in Guyana in 1994. While preparations are being met for the holding of these elections, the government continues to work with the opposition to address important matters at the national level. President Granger recently met with opposition leader Barra Jagdio, where discussions were held on the possibility of establishing committees to look at agriculture, the 2016 national budget, security, 
national unity and the border issue with Venezuela. Thanks for staying with us. What does the president do all week? Let's take a look inside his diary. President David Granger began the first of a series of bilateral meetings with visiting heads of government participating in the 70th United Nations General Assembly in New York, where he held talks with Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. The president used the opportunity to raise the Venezuelan issue with the Prime Minister and indicated that Guyana is looking to India, particularly as a strong member of the Commonwealth, to give support and to lead the debate to ensure the security of small states is guaranteed. The president will be meeting with several other world leaders over the next few days. Because of the importance that the administration attaches to education, President Granger was happy to assist 18-year-old Sion Rolux of Safaya in acquiring a laptop and other vital pieces of equipment as he commences his first semester at the University of Guyana. Rolux is visually impaired but was able to beat the odds and come out on top at the 2015 CSEC exams. We don't regard the loss of sight as, um, as an impediment, mm -hmm. but it's just a, an opportunity for you to achieve your economic, um, your educational objectives by different means. Yes. <laughs> different means. So um, the saying nowadays is not that you're disabled, is that you're differently able? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How old are you now? I'm 18. 18. Mm -hmm. So when you lost your sight? The 14 plus, 2011. Uh -huh. What happened? Well, it's a whole working thing, not really a condition, but I borrowed the nearest sight. I used to see, uh, used to see well with uh, watching everything, but for read a book, it used to be a little difficult. And always, it was always difficult. Mm -hmm. That's all I get. I mean, do start in Cuba in 2005, and have you seen you well up to 2010? We would like to see you play your full, to achieve your full potential. Yes. We'd like to enable you to play your part as any other citizen. As mm -hmm. I said, it's not a disability; it's just differently able. And I hope that this will help to. Um, help you to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish and be what you want to be. <laughs> Rolux is a first-year communication student and plans to be a journalist. With the laptop, he will be able to use special software with speech synthesizers, which is necessary for him to study. Meanwhile, the president also met with members of the East Bank Demerara arm of the Guyana Hindu Dharmic Sabha and Mr. and Mistress Leroy Haynes of Westminster West Bank Demerara, who sought an audience with the president to discuss the possibility of establishing a police outpost in their area. This week, we will take a closer look at the work of Guyana's First Lady, Mrs. Sandra Granger, who has been keeping busy over the past months, staying true to the commitment she made in the lead up to the 2015 general elections. Even though she had never anticipated a life in the public eye, Mrs. Granger rose to the occasion supporting her husband and has commenced a comprehensive work program that addresses the needs of women and children, issues that are dear to her. The First Lady believes that society will be a much better place if women, girls, and other vulnerable groups are protected and are given every opportunity to empower themselves. Domestic violence, teenage pregnancy, rape, reproductive health, education, and economic development are issues which her office is committed to tackling. Some of her most recent projects include the Buxton Youth Development Initiative, this project is designed to prepare young adults for the world of work by providing them with training in the areas of information communication technology, literacy and numeracy, entrepreneurship, and sexual reproductive health. Earlier this week, the Buxton Friendship Remedial Education Project was rolled out. It is designed to improve students' academic performance at the primary level. I know with your involvement, and I'm talking with parents, teachers, the children, and the community of Buxton, this program can be a success. And I am putting a lot of hope in it because I know of all the energy that went into the planning and the execution 
and all the talk that you had about it. She also launched a business and entrepreneurship workshop for women along the east coast of Demerara to help them to tap into their skills and to boost their small businesses. This program will also be launched in Linden. That brings us to the end of this edition of This Week with the President. Thank you for joining me. For regular updates on the Ministry of the Presidency, go to our website www.motv.gov.gy. Like our Facebook page, Ministry of the Presidency, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MOTP Guyana. Do have a safe and productive rest of the week. Goodbye.